Alright guys, another Halloween themed Amstrad video. Oh, when I say Halloween, it's uh, by the time this is processed and uploaded, Halloween will be long over. Oh well. Um, but here it is, one of my favourite films of all time. Uh, film licence from Activision, Ghostbusters on the Amstrad CPC, long play and review. Although when I say long play, it's actually more like a edited highlights of the game. The actual full footage was about an hour long, so I've chopped it up into highlights. Anyway, I'm going to shut up here because uh, you get a bit of simple speech and a karaoke session with the music and lyrics appearing. So if you want to sing along, do so. Otherwise, fast forward to about 4 minutes 40. Okay. Okay, so the karaoke sessions are over there. First time I recorded this uh, narration, I actually sang along, but uh, I've no wish to embarrass myself. So anyway, getting started up here. 
Ghostbusters for professional paranormal investigations and eliminations. We're ready to believe you. So you start off the franchise, and um, I think the whole point of this game really is to is to make money. It isn't really uh, sort of uh, much more of a point to the game than that. It's quite hard to uh, basically be so crap as to have a game over. So you get an advance from the bank of ten thousand dollars, which you can use to spend on a, a vehicle and then equipment for your vehicle for uh, ghost hunting purposes. For example, uh, we take a look at the uh, high performance car here. Looks like a nice red Ferrari. <laughs> Fifteen hundred quid. That's quite a bargain. It means you can zip faster between locations and some have more uh, space to store objects. That you purchase on the next screen, but we'll go for the uh, 1963 hearse, which of course is the classic uh, Ghostbusters Ecto-1 vehicle. Carries nine objects and goes about 90 miles an hour. So we're going to choose, uh, obviously, the Ecto-1 1963 hearse, and then objects. Right, PK energy detector that will um, show buildings turning pink when they're about to be haunted on the map. Image intensifier allows you to see ghosts better, and the marshmallow sensor will turn buildings white when the uh, marshmallow man's about to appear. Ghost bait will allow you to trap the uh, marshmallow man. Ghost vacuum, the most pointless thing in the game, uh, allows you to suck up ghosts so that you've stopped on the road. And of course, traps, you want to get as many of them as possible, uh, but unfortunately, we uh, haven't got enough money. But anyway, let's start up the game and go to the map. And there we are, we start off with Ghostbusters HQ, we move around the map there, and we go to our first uh, call, with the flashing red building, it means that's currently haunted and they've phoned uh, Ghostbusters to go and get rid of the ghost. So we take to the road, which is uh, the most utterly pointless and tedious section in the game, because absolutely naff all happens on it, apart from if you've got a ghost to vacuum up, more on that later. So you get two Ghostbusters, per building, position them left and right which is the traditional way of doing this where it's the ghost is sort of in between start the start the beams and then when he's over the trap hit the fire button and you get a nice ghost busted sampled speech there so yeah just waiting for buildings to sort of flash up I mean that's uh, that building's turning pink because of the PK energy detector we picked up which is at the front of the car there so there may be a ghost here but not just yet, unfortunately. So we'll just make an edit cut and move on here. Because the game's quite slow to start off with. Um, basically, you see the city PK energy there is at 175. That slowly increases. And uh, the higher it gets, the more ghosts and haunted buildings you'll get. And you get those four ghosts sort of like um, moving towards the Zool in the center of the map there. Now you can stop them um, in their tracks and hoover them up whilst you're driving if you wish to. But we've just gone back to Ghostbusters HQ there to drop off all our ghosts we've captured into the storage unit and uh, revive our team members and uh, power up their backpacks. So yeah, those, you see those four ghosts there, there they go, about to go into Zool. The more times they get there, the, the quicker the PK energy of the city goes up. As you can see it jumped there, and we'll just make another little edit cut there. So if you want to use the ghost vacuum and uh, play the game for longer, essentially the slower that you stop the PK energy from going up, the longer you can play the game and, and the more money you can make should you wish to. Oh, quite a few pink buildings there. So when you do choose to go to a building, the ghost you've stopped there, you can uh, hoover them up whilst you're driving, and this is the, pretty much the only point of this driving section. I just wish they'd done something more of this driving section, like may maybe traffic to avoid, and have, a, have like a damage meter for your Ecto-1, and you have to, you know, spend money repairing your car. I mean, this is the same across all the versions, um, like the original Atari and Commodore 64 versions done by the legendary David Crane. So it feels rather a bit unfinished, maybe. They could have done a lot more of that sort of driving section. 
as it stands is utterly pointless. Unless you want to slow down the uh, PK energy of the city. So yeah, basically the point of the game is when, when the PK energy gets to 9,999, see that key there and that sort of black um, thingy moving across Union Street? That's the key master and the gatekeeper, symbols representing them. Once they get to the middle of Zul um, at 9,999, it's time to go on a sneak past the uh, Marshmallow Man guarding Zul and uh, defeat Zul himself or herself. <laughs> and that's pretty much it. The only way you can lose a game is if you've not made enough money, uh, i.e., you're in negative uh, balance. Uh, I think that's the only way you can uh, lose the game. And occasionally a ghost will sneak through a streamer like that. A bit annoying. Ooh, very close to being caught by the trap. And the little swine, he laughs at you. <laughs> so we'll just forward on the game here again. Oh, there's, there's a couple of ways of trapping ghosts though. There's a little different technique I like to use sometimes. Perhaps this only works best in the Amstrad version. I've seen other versions, uh, other systems, different ways of doing it that work better. This one's quite a good one. Just have both of them to the right there and just push the, push the ghost into the trap. There you go. I remember you only have uh, three traps unless you picked up more. Um, so when you've uh, filled up on them, you'll have to go back to Ghostbusters HQ. So uh, yeah, I mean there's no real sort of game over. And to be honest guys, it's a pretty easy game. Most of you should be able to do this. It's quite the hardest part is sneaking past the uh, Marshmallow Man at the very end. Which can be quite tricky. Um, I do really like the music in the game though. And it's actually the graphics are quite well presented for the for its uh, for the year of release, which was 1984 stroke 1985. And we've got sample speech as well. In fact, I, I like how the music sounds in this version compared to, like, say, the Commodore 64 actually. But the sampled speech on the Commodore 64 version is much better, much clearer. And uh, yeah, the Atari version is very similar. Um, the Atari 2600 version less so, less impressive, but still quite good for the machine. Not played the Specky version though. Ah, completely muffed it up there. But you may still be able to get the ghost. If you're lucky, you might. There you go. I was very lucky there. A few pink buildings there, but we'll have a bit more ghost busting action here. Oh, look, I did love this game as a kid. It's one of the earliest games I ever got, and I uh, loved it to bits. I was a huge fan of the Ghostbusters, um, and uh, had a, bought the comics, had the action figures. And even in the playground at school, I was a little Ghostbuster. I made a uh, proton pack out of a cornflake packet, and uh, a proton stick was made out of a long uh, tube, which I uh, sellotaped with uh, strings the backpack, and I ran around pretending to be a Ghostbuster. <laughs> I would have made a ghost trap out of a shoebox as well. <laughs> I had my own little ghost detecting kit. So, fond memories of Ghostbusters, and I love this game to bits, even though it, with hindsight, extremely limited. Oh, here's what happens when you cross the streamers, it is possible. Not much, but from a message saying uh, you cross the streamers, fortunately, uh, your backpacks 
shorted out in time so the universe doesn't collapse. Good stuff. And you have to go back to Ghostbusters HQ to have them light charged up again. So, another edit there, we're just jumping forward. Um, I don't think we'll do any more edits from now. Or maybe one more. As you can see, the PK energy of the city now is at 7,500, so we're getting quite close to um, being able to confront, confront Zool, and the whole city will be going nuts by now. <clears throat> and as you can see, those ghosts are moving a lot quicker towards Zool, so uh, the PK energy increases a lot more. And also, if you don't capture the ghost, you've gone to stop at the building and he gets away. Increases the PK energy further as well, but by about 300. But really, the, po the whole point of this game really is uh, it's just wealth acquisition. Because um, once you complete the game, you get a code and continue on with the current balance you have plus an extra advance from the bank. So you can go and buy a better car, uh, more items, or whatever, and thus you continue on. And that's, you know, that's pretty much it. It's not hard to complete, and there's not much incentive to come back around, apart from having a nicer vehicle. Which means the tedious drive between, uh, you know, buildings and where you've been is cut down quite significantly. If you've got the uh, fourth car there, the sports car, what looks like a red Ferrari. Because these sections are completely pointless. But I like the idea of actually playing the part of a Ghostbuster properly, as in like, uh, you know, you get you get phone calls about where ghosts are, going into the building and stopping the ghosts. I mean, how many of you have played the recent uh, Ghostbusters game on the uh, Xbox, PS3 or PC? I did. Uh, I got it on the PC and, uh, oh, very quickly, Marshmallow Man attack. To be really quick. And uh, press the B button to drop your uh, ghost bait, which is the Marshmallow Man bait. And um, once you're done, you're able to uh, stop him in his tracks. There you go. And the mayor awards you uh, a paltry $2,000 for averting a Marshmallow Man catastrophe. If you're not quick enough, you'll go and stomp and destroy a building. And you'll get a massive fine for that. And there we go, we can suck the ghosts up again. But yeah, as I was saying guys, who played the uh, latest Ghostbusters game? I did like it a lot, but it's just a, another linear um, gameplay experience, just like Duke Nukem was, the, you know, the re recent reboot. Um, I'd love to be based in like the Ghostbusters office, getting phone calls, deciding where you're going to go, you know, managing your budget and all that kind of stuff. That would been a much more amazing Ghostbusters game. Um, which, uh, you know, this game actually captures really well. And you know what, I probably enjoyed this more than the uh, the modern Ghostbusters game. Well, actually, I don't know, I still really enjoyed the, the modern Ghostbusters reboot. It was still quite fun, it's just a shame it's such a linear gameplay. Oh well. Enough about that, but this game, graphics are okay, they're just a bit flickery at times, the sprites. Actually they're quite flickery a lot of the time. Remember guys, if this is still this is 1984-85, the amateur had only been out maybe a few months, a year tops, so it's early days of programming. But it's still well done. If if it feels rather you know unfinished. But that's the, that's the fault of the original, not this version, which is just, you know, done what the original did. But I have real fond memories of this game. Just can't beat being a Ghostbuster. i try my uh, favourite technique there. There you go. We get them caught between the two beams much better. And of course, once you've got two Ghostbusters deployed, um, once you've got your beams going, um, 
If they're facing each other, if you move left, um, press the left key, the right Ghostbuster will move to the left, and if you press right, the left hand Ghostbuster will move to the right, so you can push them in towards each other to trap the ghost. But, uh, oh yeah, okay, so uh, yeah, I mean the game's really simple and it's quite easy to beat. Um, but it's you know it's good fun for half an hour definitely. Certainly zapping the ghosts are the most fun, even though it's the same you know thing over and over again just with a different building backdrop. There you go. And uh, as long as you have patience whilst uh, waiting to fire your proton beam, you know. It's not too hard. Most times you mess up is because you're just too uh, anxious and too quick and the ghost is absolutely the way. And once you've, once you've initiated your proton beam, sorry, you can't stop them until you uh, use your uh, trap. I forgot to mention that. So yeah, this is from Activision Software. Um, programming team behind it was James Software Limited. They did a few earlier games for the Amstrad, like Master of the Lamps, Dambusters, Zorro from US Gold, which is alright. Oh, Marshmallow Man Alert! There he is, so uh, you've got plenty of time to deploy your ghost bait by pressing the, uh, pressing the B button on the keyboard. You've got to be really crap and slow not to press it in time. I will say, compared to like the Commodore 64 version, this generally does sort of play and move a lot slower. I haven't mentioned that. Oops. Um, yeah, and obviously, look how flickery it's getting. And we've got lots of sprites on the screen. But yeah, it's the same for 1985, uh, the latest. This is this is not bad programming. Before people really knew how to uh, use uh, and unlock the machine, the Amstrad. I'm impressed that they got sample speech in the game this uh, this early into the machine's life. That must have been a real treat and novelty to hear that at the time. Okay, well we're not far off the end of this now. As you can see, the city's PK energy is at 9,100. And they've got lots of buildings lighting up. And yeah, the energy starts getting uh, faster and faster with its how it increases. Oops. <laughs> so we're just going to try and snag as many ghosts as we can before we have to go and confront Zul. Oh, now that's a bit naughty. <laughs> but I still got him. Somehow he got out the proton beams there, and that occasionally happens. I'm not sure if that's a bug or meant to happen, you know, if you took too long initiating your trap. But a bit annoying, but we're just quite lucky there to still catch him. Stupid ghost. We all look like a blue slimer each time. Oh, he's bloody got through it again. That's why using this traditional method of having Ghostbusters left and right can be uh, annoying and not always work. You can laugh at me now. <laughs> so you might want to try the method I was using before of having uh, two facing the same way at the edge of the screen and then pushing it, pushing the ghost towards the trap. like I'm about to attempt to do here. This is probably the safest method. Just make sure you do it when the ghost is low enough to the ground. Yeah, look how fast those yellow uh, spooks are going towards Zul now. PK energy is at 9,600, so we're nearly there. But 
it's kind of tedious at the start of the game where the PK energy is right low, ghosts are moving really slow and there's hardly any buildings to go on there to start zapping ghosts at. You can have a wait sometimes of nearly 10 minutes before you really start getting into action with busting ghosts. Which is another little sort of minor drawback. Sometimes if you're quick you can set you, you just release the trap really early if he's, if he's near it. it. Tends to hover around the bottom middle of the screen when you first appear, so uh, if you're quick and handy you can get in there quick. Alright, ah, okay, we're out now at 9999 on the PK energy. So we're just now waiting for the key master and the gatekeeper to uh, arrive at Zul together. Just get a couple more ghosts in while we're uh, while we're waiting. Ah, oh, I've screwed it up. But will we get the ghost? Oops, made a mistake there. I'm across the streamers. Thankfully, it didn't mean the uh, the end of all civilization. Now your backpack's just short out, and got to go back to Ghostbusters headquarters and get a bollocking from Janine Melnitz, probably. <laughs> oh yeah, just noticed uh, and remembered, there's only uh, three Ghostbusters in the game. One, two, three. So what's happened to Winston Zedmore? I always feel bad he always gets le left out. There's always, to me, there's always four Ghostbusters. Anyway, now told, go to Zool, sneak past the Marshmallow Man, and close the portal. As you can see, the, the gatekeeper and keymaster both arrived there. That was Sigourney Weaver and Rick Moranis in the film, wasn't it? I ended up shagging or something off camera. <laughs> anyway, right. Off to all we go. A ghost of vacuum up. And here we go. Against the Marshmallow Man, just got to time it right and sneak past him when he's at the top of his jump. Not as impressive looking as the uh, Commodore 64 and Atari versions because the uh, Marshmallow Man is absolutely massive in size. And then we get a bit of a, we get a teeny tiny Marshmallow Man. And oops, screwed it up. But of course we've got three <coughs> uh, Ghostbusters. We've got one more to get in there. Winston Zedmore's obviously fucked off. Yay, and we've done it! No end game uh, screen though, guys. Unlike, uh, there's a bit of an ending on the Commodore and Atari versions where the, uh, like, uh, it zooms up the building and shows Ghostbusters closing the portal and uh, destroying Zool. But instead, uh, we just get this uh, tech screen and a ghostly laugh there. Portal to the spirit world is closed. You earn five thousand dollar reward from the city. Also, you've made more money than you started with. The bank will raise your credit limit to thirty-five thousand two hundred dollars. You get an account number. That's like basically your password or whatever. So if you start the game up again, that's the um, account. You type that account number in with my name Zypho, and you'll be able to start with that credit limit. And so yeah, the game starts all over again. This time we just have a lot more money. So let's go for our Ferrari. There you go. And you can get lots of stuff now. Get all the usual crap. Might as well. 
Oh, I forget. On the other, on the, there's another screen, screen number three, which has a electric containment unit. We can store up to ten ghosts, I believe it is. So that's quite handy. Portable laser confinement system. I think it holds nine or ten ghosts. So there you go. But anyway, so the you know the game is about to start over again. So uh, I'll leave it here. And uh, yeah, enjoyable stuff for 1984-1985, a decent film license, one of the most remembered and liked, even if it is a bit knob and uh, simple, I still like it a lot, so um, I'm going to give this a uh, 7.5 out of 10, so thanks for watching guys, and as you can see there the uh, high performance car gets you to the buildings a lot quicker, thank god, but anyway thanks for watching, I hope you had a good Halloween weekend, and uh, see you in the next video. Cheers. Bye.